Hey guys and welcome back to another episode. In this video we're going to have a look back at a trip I took recently where I took my Roly 35 and Street Candy. So this video is going to mainly focus around the Street Candy and we're going to see if it looks as tasty as it sounds. So what is Street Candy? This is what their website has to say. Street Candy is a panachromatic black and white film originally used for security and surveillance cameras. It was often used in banks, ATMs, offices and sensible locations before the digital takeover and they've basically given it a new lease of life and made it a 35mm film. They say it will deliver beautiful contrast while retaining rich details throughout its wide dynamic range. Being a 400 ISO film it's easy to shoot and forgiving and becoming a go-to black and white film for film photographers. Comes in 36 exposures, hand rolled and recycled film canisters. Now the box does look pretty cool and so does the canister but the downside of having recycled film canisters is the ISO sort of barcode on the side of the canister won't work. They actually cover that up with a sticker so you can't see it. So if you have a sort of point and shoot that won't work, it won't automatically recognise the ISO, you'll have to manually set it. Not a big deal, especially when I was shooting on the Roly 35, it doesn't read that barcode in anyway and I have to set it manually so that didn't make much odds to me but is one to watch out for. Now before we head on to the images we're going to quickly talk about how I developed the film. So I actually did something called stand developing or semi stand. So the way this works is you use a really highly diluted developer, in this case I used Rodinal and the ratio is something like 100 to 1 so you use 1 mil of Rodinal for 100 mil of water. You basically develop over a very very long period of time and the idea is that it exhausts all of the developer. Now why did I do this? So there's a few different reasons for stand development. One is it's really easy and it's really easy and convenient to do. You don't have to watch your film, you don't have to sit there inverting it every minute. So if you're lazy, it's good for that. Now, due to the way it works, it can also give you a little bit more dynamic range and a little bit less contrast. So knowing this was a contrasty film, I decided that having sort of a bit less contrast was more my style anyway. And Rodinal is a developer that is really, really good for sharpness, but the caveat to that is that you get a lot of grain detail being a 400 ISO film, I already knew it was going to be quite grainy, so doing um, stand development with Rodin or helps kind of counter that a little bit, so you kind of get a bit of a better mix between sharp grain and sharp images. And another reason for doing it is just because I like experimenting. So I've never done stand developing before, and I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. After all, that is half the fun with film photography for me. It's having a bit of an experiment, even when it comes to the developing. Now, after the developing, you then have to use a fixer. And I had a bit of an odd problem with the fixer. So normally I use the fixer for something like four or five minutes, inverting every 30 seconds. And that literally didn't work for this film. I took the film out after washing it, and it was still very sort of milky and murky in colour. So I ended up developing it again for another five minutes and then, then it came out okay. So that might be one to watch. It seems to take an awful lot longer to fix than normal films. I've been using Ilford Rapid Fixer and I think it should have taken the four or five minutes that I tried. Can't really over fix images. So if you are developing this film yourself, I'd recommend that you just fix for a little bit longer than you normally would and hopefully you'll get good negatives. Now one of the downsides I found with this film, having processed and scanned this myself, is the film is very curly. So when I dry the film I hang it from the ceiling um, with a peg on the bottom to like stretch it out when it dries. It still came out curly. I pressed it between books for 24 hours, so I got some big heavy books and put it in between them. It was still curly, which meant scanning it was a bit of a pain. I've never really experienced that before with a film. Normally when I'm using things like HP5, I've never had an issue with curly film, but this was very, very curly. I also had some odd development marks that you might be able to see in some of the images. Again, not sure if that was me and my developing or whether that's something to do with how they sort of reprocess this film. So that's enough of the boring development talk. Let's move on to some of the images now. So as I said earlier, I did use the Roly 35 for this, so I took the film and loaded it in. Now initially the plan with this was to shoot it at night. I went out for a meal with some of my friends so I took some images. The plan was to push it a couple stops. I then had a few drinks and forgot about taking photos. So I only took a handful of photos and here are some of the images. Now this left me with a start of a roll that had been shot at 1600 ISO and the next day I was taking a trip to the beach and it was a bright sunny day which you don't typically get here in the UK so it really stitched me up there but then I decided that I was going to shoot the rest of the film at box speed so I shot the rest of the film now at 400 ISO. Now this is part of the reason why I use stand development. You can use multiple ISOs on the same roll of film and develop it all at once due to how the developer sort of exhausts itself. So the next morning we headed off bright and early down to Mudderford. For those of you who don't know where that is, that's on the south coast of the UK. It's not too far from me, it's sort of an hour, hour and a half. On the way down to the beach we stopped for a coffee in the McDonald's. It's the sort of typical way of clearing your head here in the UK after a few too many drinks the night before. And because I'm not a real film photographer I didn't take a picture of the services station we just headed straight off down to the beach. 
So, so initially we parked up at Mudderford and we headed down towards Highcliffe. Now, the walk's only a couple miles and you end up at a bit of a castle. So unlike most castles in the UK, the castle's actually still all there and I couldn't help but think to myself, the castle looked very modern. So I had a quick look and it's from the mid 1800s. Does that really count as a castle? Or is it just some sort of big kind of old building? It doesn't really count as a castle in my book, but there you go. But we've got some nice photos there anyway. From there, we headed back down to the beach and the good thing about this end of the beach is it's dog friendly and I'm 100% okay with that. So we soaked up some rays and before long it started to get very overcast and along with that dark cloud it got very cold very quickly so we started to head back to the car and at this point we're still sort of a mile and a half away. Now, I'm not sure if it's like this in other countries, but there's two rules when you go to the beach. You must have fish and chips and ice cream. If you don't have either of them and you don't post them on Instagram, did you really go? So we quickly stopped off to get some fish and chips and it was far from quick. Here in the UK, we've got obviously lots of social distancing at the minute. The queue for the fish and chip shop was very long and then you kind of had to go and do some sort of like McDonald's drive through kind of thing. You ordered your food and then went and stood behind a table with a number on it and waited for them to deliver it to you. We sat down for that fish and chips and the heavens opened. So we quickly rushed back to the car and finished the fish and chips. At this point I only had a few shots left so we quickly hopped back out the car once the weather cheered up and took the final few shots around the quay down in Mudderford. So what are my thoughts about this film? Now, the things that I do like about this film, it is very contrasty and I do quite like contrasty images and this film definitely provides that in bucket loads. The, f the film though is very, very grainy and I didn't help that by developing Rodinal, but the film, you can definitely see the grain in it. Now, grain is very subjective. From my personal point of view, I'd rather not have too much grain in images. I don't like it when the grain becomes overpowering. And I think in some of these images, the grain stands out far too much for my liking. In terms of the developing and scanning, like I said earlier, the developing was a bit of a pain. It took twice as long to fix as I was expecting it to. From a scanning point of view, the film was so curly. And even now, a week later when I'm shooting this, I've just checked and the film is still very curly now. Now, would I buy this film again? My biggest problem with this is from a cost point of view, Street Candy here in the UK costs about eight or nine pound, whereas Ilford HP5 costs four or five pound. And I can't help but think that generally, in most cases, Ilford is the better film. It develops better, it gives me more pleasing images, the grain's in a little bit more under control. So from that perspective, I can't see why I would buy Street Candy and not Ilford. But if you really like contrasty and grainy images, then I definitely recommend you give it a go. So I plan on continuing this more like reflective format where I kind of shoot some film and then talk about it after the case. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. There's plenty more of this coming. We're off to St. Ives for a few days in a couple of weeks time, and I'm definitely gonna be shooting that. And I've got some interesting films to use whilst I'm there. So guys, thank you for watching. Cheers. Mm -hmm.